Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I've got a treat for you. It's Katrina Johnson, PhD. She is one of my favorite people we've ever had come through our class. She's a rainmaker and she's a social scientist. And not only are we getting her answers for how she thinks and executes around business development techniques, but we're also getting woven in some of the most important research that backs up why she does what she does. So she's seeing, she's seeing two things at once. She's seeing and executing uh, on business development, and she's become a, a huge rainmaker starting her own firm, but she also knows why we all do what we do and why we avoid what we do. And that's why that's why I'm so excited to to have uh, to have Katrina on the on the show. And and what I ask her in this episode is super interesting. It's our fourth in the last three were so good. I ask her to tell me of a time when she's done something around business development that she's quite proud of. And this is hard for somebody like Katrina because she doesn't like to toot her own horn, but but we really worked at it and we got something really good. And as we dug deeper into that exact issue, why she's proud of it, what she did, what she overcame, it's a heck of a story. And she's going to share that with you in this episode. Now, one thing to think about before we get into the episode is if you are stretched for time, if you uh, need to get the most relationship bang per minute. <laughs> so you have to deepen relationships, but you don't have a lot of time to do it. Head over to growbigplaybook.com. There's an instant download there. It's the top seven ways we've ever seen that you can deepen relationships in, for each of them, five minutes or less. All you have to do to get that is head over to growbigplaybook.com. If you're stretched for time and relationships matter for you, growbigplaybook.com, sign up, and you'll get the instant download. All right, so that's that. Here's Katrina Johnson, PhD. Hey everybody, it's Mo, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm thrilled to ask this question I, to Katrina. I learned this question from my friend Luke Burgess in the book Wanting and some conversations that we had. And he's just, this is such a well-designed question. Katrina, I want you to tell us, with your background as a PhD, as a researcher, as a as a neuropsychologist, neuro, like you do so many things, I'm not even sure I use the right words, but <laughs> given your background and that the great business development work that you've done, I want you to be honest and tell us of a story, a business development story that you're particularly proud of. Get personal. Okay, um, so this was probably five years ago. I fly to Manhattan to meet a candidate for a president role, possible CEO successor in a mid-sized public company in the textile industry. I do it as a day trip, so I'm secretly hoping that this person is easy to work with and sort of easy to figure out so that I can get home on time. <laughs> Um, I know from some of the pre-work that I do, the online leadership assessments, that she is skeptical by nature. I underestimated how skeptical and how skeptical of me she would be. Uh, she was a lifelong New Yorker, smart, tough, assertive. She looked at me through beady eyes that said, what am I doing here and what is the point? Um, so she gets hired. I end up working with her almost to her chagrin <laughs> for the first six months of her role. But I know some things about how that organization works. I know some things about the quirky uh, executive chairman of the board, for instance. I know some things about the unique business challenges. So get to know her, work with her, through her, get to know some other aspects of the, the management team, Start adding at the team level bits and pieces here and there. Fast forward to today, uh, just a couple months ago, had a three hour dinner with this woman in, in Manhattan, outside, mind you, uh, talking about everything from her new role to yoga to corporate debt structure. Um, and that team has sort of scattered. And because of those relationships that I built just in the last year, I've had a whole new stream of business that is a new management team, new set of business challenges that developed out of that relationship. And, you know, it's just winning over skeptics is sort of my jam. <laughs> so that was part of it. Um, but I think as part of that, I did 
probably three things. One, I didn't make it about me. So in other words, I didn't take it personally. Um, two, I got curious. I really wanted to understand her skepticism and learn what it could teach me. And then three, like a good running back, I waited for holes, the potential holes to open. And once they did, I darted through. Interesting. So that, that it's great you covered those because I was going to ask the, the follow-up question Luke taught me is, hey, Katrina, what did you do that particularly made you proud in this? You know, got you it. Okay. Sorry about that, Mo. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You, you got it. So we're going to dig in deeper because we're there. So when, when you, um, I, I think the first thing you mentioned is super interesting. You made it not about you. So it would be so easy to, to take offense or to, to, to be reactive to skepticism or things like that. So mentally, I'm going to go deep here. Like, what did you do to say, I'm going to lean into this. I'm going to engage. I'm going to get curious. I'm going to ask questions because that's hard for people to do. How did you do it? Absolutely. You know, first of all, growing up, I think professionally in an academic medical center, I had to learn early on with um, physicians that, you know, I didn't come in with their respect. I had to earn their respect. Um, I had to kind of, you know, earn their credibility. And so that was a lesson I learned, I mean, at 26, 27, when I went, huh, they don't really seem to care that I'm here <laughs> or to know that I <laughs> have any value, right? Um, but so I took that as a challenge and I learned to kind of show them, you know, that I had good judgment, that I was right, that I could do things efficiently, that they couldn't always do. Um, so I think I had some training. Um, and, you know, I think that second part around getting curious is a big part of that. You can't look at things from a scientific perspective. You can't test hypotheses when you're all up in your head. And so, you know, when you do that reframe of this probably isn't about me because most of the time it's not. Um, and then you kind of go, well, what is this about then? And I think that really helps with the depersonalization, but it's certainly a skill that a lot of my clients and, and myself sometimes struggle with. So let, so that's super helpful. Thank you. And now I want to dig a bit deeper in that weighted for holes idea that, that running back metaphor you used, what think of one specific hole, um, you know, maybe it was the first one, the third one, whatever, but, but when you noticed it. What was it? And what did you do to enter and start to build credibility to start to win this, this curious skeptic, if you will, over? Sure. So there was, it's a great question because there were a few. There was one in particular that I think was kind of a, kind of a turning point. There was an internal assessment they were doing of a potential successor to another C-suite role there. And, you know, everybody always likes to, to promote within when they can. And this person had been personally mentored by the CEO and, you know, I get charged with doing the assessment and I had a lot of concerns. <laughs> I had a lot of concerns that um, later turned out to be quite warranted. And so, you know, being able to show courage, especially to this tough New Yorker who was sort of like, well, what do you have to add? Um, being able to say my piece, reaching out to her, even when she wasn't directly involved in the beginning to say, hey, what's your take here? What do you think? And I had a strong feeling that some of her concerns aligned with mine, but I asked it in a very open way. It wasn't any sort of, you know, triangulating or getting anybody on sides, but it was just opening the door. And then I think as she and a couple others saw me, you know, kind of be candid and say, here are my concerns and here's all the data, right? It's not just my gut feel. Um, I think that really earned a lot of credibility. And so then when it came time to really think about what that role required long term, that was an opportunity to dart through. But first, I had to kind of prove that, you know, I wasn't some flashy consultant that would just come in and say whatever to get more work. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And um, it sounded like you had to be bold. You had to be transparent in a time that was tough. And it was through that, it was delivering when times were tough that, that the credibility started to occur. And it sounds like over time, you just built more and more and more and more and more and, more and eventually 
won a skeptic over, it sounds like. Right, right. And I think patience, Mo, I know that's something you've talked about. I think that's something others on your um, podcast have talked about. And that was certainly relevant here when that whole, you know, internal hire happened. I had to give them a chance to kind of grieve is probably too strong of a word, but I had to give them a chance to settle. I couldn't go in in that same call or, you know, the next day and say, okay, what's the plan and how much work is in it for me? Like I had to just let things be for a bit, work on a couple small things, kind of go into the background for a bit and then circle back to say when they, when I felt like they were ready to say, all right, what, What's next? Can I help? Can somebody else help? What are we doing? Yeah, let me let me share a phrase with you and get your reaction because I, I, I right before we logged down to tape this, I was working with a bunch of high uh, powered lawyers, and one of the things that the group they were learning business development and, and from us, and one of the things that we really heard was skepticism just around um, reaching out a lot or adding value or anything that's not some real, like the only way they could think they could reach out. And I know you disagree. I do too. And, and we were able to, 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 I think, move them in this way in a positive way. But they were, they were like, the only way we should reach out is when we have this real substantive, massive thing that we should send. And the, obviously the science doesn't show that, that that works. You know, fewer big, heavy interactions just don't, don't work. You've got to keep it up. So the phrase we used that seemed to strike with a chord with them was divorce yourself from the outcome. Yes. Do the right thing. Keep yeah. adding value. Um, do what's best for the situation. Divorce yourself. In this, in your case, it was divorce yourself from the outcome of you might not be hired by sharing right. this critical <laughs> stuff, right? But you did the right thing and actually got you hired more, I would guess. So what do you just think of that phrase, divorce yourself from the outcome? Is it not not just this one scenario, but but as you think about business development in general? I, I love that. I mean, I, I really do. I think that, you know, quieting that anxious, that um, even over eager, that more emotional, emotionally driven part of us um, becomes so helpful. Your problem solving gets better. You're more creative. You're more resor resourceful. You're more patient. There's just a lot of good outcomes that come when we can sort of quiet that other part of the brain. And I think divorcing yourself from the outcome does just that, right? A focus on process. It also creates a sense of self-efficacy, which has, you know, there's tons of data around how important self-efficacy is from everything from mice to humans and, and a lot of things in between. And so when you're focused on process and not on outcome, you control that right? You, you can do that next step and you can recover. I, I made a mistake just a few weeks ago because I was over eager and I got back a thanks in all lowercase with a period, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, I can focus on process. I let that be for a bit, right? And then when I had something valuable to say, I came back in in a tiny little amount, right? And tested the water. So I think that sense of self-efficacy, that quieting that anxious part of the brain and that allowing you to recover is all wrapped up in your one phrase, divorce yourself from the outcome. Right. Fantastic. That was just a great way to summarize. And I, and I, and I like you just bringing up the literature and what's, what's in the research around that. Okay, so Katrina, folks are gonna wanna connect with you in some way, how should they do it? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say if you're in the process of building a management team, rebuilding a management team, looking for that executive assessment, onboarding, coaching, talent planning, uh, definitely reach out to me. The best way to get me is email Katrina at kcjconsult.com. It's not fancy, but it is effective. And I would love to give some resources, whether that's a no cost discovery assessment or whether that's some other resources that might fit your unique situation. So Katrina at kcjconsult.com. Fantastic. Thanks for being on the show. And everybody, on our, our, our next question, we're, we're four for four on just having great insights from Katrina. We got one more episode. It's coming up next. And I'm going to ask Katrina if she could tape a, tape a message to her younger self around business development, what would it be? And I can't wait to see what her answer is. Um, oh, there so are so many, Mo. <laughs> I'm going to have to think real quick like, on okay. the break to narrow it to one. <laughs> You can take a Netflix episode to your right. phone. <laughs> a documentary series, you know, like a mini mini series, maybe? That would be more like it. <laughs> if you 
can record the Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> so, um, no, this is going to be great. And I can't wait to hear what it is. So everybody, don't forget, subscribe, follow, whatever the button is on your platform. Make sure you follow the show. That's how you'll know the next episode's coming if you're watching, if you're getting these daily and how all the good stuff we've got in season three with other amazing rainmakers and deep experts, experts like Katrina. So Katrina, thanks for being on the show. This has been a blast. Thank you, Mo. Really appreciate it.